Hey, good afternoon. My name is Jeff Morneau, an investment advisor with uh, TCG, which is the financial planning partner with FirstMark. So um, I, I help service the FirstMark Credit Union. You might see me around the branches or see me on some of these videos. So my contact information will be at the end of today's video. If you'd like to reach out for any financial planning consultation, it's, it's free or any investment advice. Um, so today we're talking about inflation and, and why I wanted to kind of take a, a couple minutes and talk about inflation is because, you know, whether you are high income owner earner or low income earner, you know, inflation does not discriminate. Everyone feels it. So, you know, some of these topics like taxes or, you know, an IRA you might not have a 401k, you know, they're kind of specific to different situations, but inflation is really all encompassing. I think we all feel it. And so really, it, it's hard to kind of create strategies around ways to avoid inflation because you need to purchase goods to survive, like food and energy. Um, but I, I, the goal of today's video is to really help you kind of understand some of the dynamics at play so that you can be more in tune with what's going on kind of behind the scenes, specifically with like the Federal Reserve and, and interest rates. And so to help you kind of educate on, on also the his, his history of inflation as well, to give some context for the inflation that we're seeing. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So we're we're TCG, we do retirement and private wealth. So if you have a if you are a teacher or you have a spouse, a teacher, or a friend, they might know us from the education space at being the you know um third party administrator or the provider of a 457 or 403B for um, school districts, predominantly in the state of Texas. Uh, we also do 401ks um, and then the capacity that I work with with first mark being private wealth so IRAs brokerage accounts um we we do holistic financial planning we're uh headquarters located in Austin Texas so just up the road for most of y'all in San Antonio um and then we got acquired by Hub International which is a large um employee benefits firm um so yeah TCG and Hub International um so kind of the agenda today, we're going to talk about what is inflation, history of inflation in America, causes of inflation, historical in the present tense, a relationship between interest rates, inflation, and the markets. And then at the end, again, contact information if you'd like to reach out to discuss anything kind of discussed here or any other financial planning needs you might have. Uh, so just kind of going through the definitions, uh, I think it's really important kind of as we, you know, one of the first things to learn is a language around something before you can kind of dive deeper. So just going into some of the definitions here, Start at the top, inflation. So inflation is a general increase in, in the prices and decrease of the purchasing value of money. I think we all intuitively know that definition. I think we all feel that definition, right? So when you go to the store, your money is not going as far as it used to. That is inflation. Uh, the practical definition is too many dollars chasing too few goods. And I like that definition because it defines inflation, but it also kind of goes at the heart of what causes inflation. And we're going to revisit that later on when we talk about the cause of inflation. Uh, hyperinflation is rapid out of control inflation, typically measuring more than 50% increase per month. We are not in hyperinflation. We are we are in an inflammatory environment. We are there, there, inflation is a big issue, but, but hyperinflation for for some context, um, a popular example is like Germany follow, following World War One, where at the end of World War One it was four German marks to the American dollar. By 1923, it was one trillion German marks to a dollar hyperinflation. So just basically where the currency almost becomes useless and kind of almost have to push the reset button. So we're, we're, we're not anywhere near there, although we are feeling inflation. Uh, deflation is a lowering of prices. That's the opposite of inflation and not to be confused with disinflation, which is the reduction of the rate of inflation. So those are very different. So let me give you an example. If if the CPI came in this month, let's say at, at 6% and the previous month it was at 7%, that's not to say that a loaf of bread has gone down in price or was seven dollars and now it's six right that would be deflation what that is is disinflation so the prices of goods still are going up just the rate at which they are going up is decreasing um and that's important for some people to to kind of wrap their minds around because when they say hey we're trying to get inflation under control and bring it back to like the two percent target rate um that's not to say that you're like great when they do that, prices are going to go down and they're going to be back to normal. In a sense, unless we see deflation, this is going to be kind of the new normal for prices. Um, and hopefully, you know, um, wages kind of catch up and then we kind of go from there. So we're trying to not bring the prices down, so to speak, just trying to 
get inflation under control. So re reduce the rate at which prices are inflating. That is disinflation. And that's that's kind of where we see each other. We were to see ourselves Q1 of 2023. Um, stagflation, you might hear that a little bit because, you know, looking back into the 70s and early 80s, we had stagflation, which is really scary because it's high inflation and simultaneously high unemployment. And so it was almost like an anomaly people didn't think it could exist because how can you have prices going up when you're also having higher unemployment but that that's where we found ourselves in in um in the 70s and early 80s we are not dealing with stagflation right now especially with a low unemployment rate but you might hear that term and that's kind of the worst of both worlds um and then core inflation is changes in costs and goods and services excluding food and energy sectors so you might ask why why would food energy sectors be excluded because food and energy sectors are typically very um not dependent but they, they can be greatly affected by macroeconomic events that are really not tied directly to inflation. So for instance, um, if there's a drought somewhere in the world that could really affect food prices. If there's a, an, a, a conflict like we see, you know, with Russia and Ukraine, that could cause energy shortages, which could spike the energy costs. Is that too few goods or too, too many dollars chasing too few goods? Or is that just kind of a macroeconomic event that is like, you know, dealing with one sector in a specific time period. So to get kind of an overall idea of whether it's just these macroeconomic events or whether it's truly inflation, lots of times I look at core inflation, which excludes um, the food and energy sectors. Um, history of inflation in the USA. I love line graphs because they tell a story and this one clearly tells the story. Uh, a story. A couple of takeaways, the first being, you know, if you were born in the early 80s or beyond, like me, born in 1984, this is the first time you're dealing with it. So if, when you're like, hey, I'm not used to seeing prices go up this much at the grocery store, or even at Best Buy or whatever, that, that is true. And this graph kind of proves it. We are in unprecedented inflation. However, if you were born in the 60s, then you have, this is kind of your second go around with it, where you can see in the 70s, in the early 80s, we had, we had a huge, huge spike in um in inflation and so lots of times you might hear about the 70s kind of in the news cycle where economists are kind of looking back to look forward to say what can we learn from that um and you can kind of see how there was there was the two the two peaks there and that's kind of what the federal reserve as we kind of move on to interest rates kind of trying to avoid is this kind of start and stop nature where interest rates come up and interest rates go down and they come back up and they go back down. They kind of want it one and done. And I think that's one of the takeaways that that the Federal Reserve has taken away from the experience learned in the 70s. Um, so the major causes of inflation. Um, so going back to that too many, too many dollars, too few goods, that's really kind of at the heart of this. And you can see that post pandemic, we kind of have the worst of both worlds. So both are at play where we have demand pull. So that's when demand or money supply outpaces the supply of goods. Um, so that's when there's too many dollars. Demand pull is too many dollars. Well, we have we had a long run of very like quantitative easing monetary policy with like super low interest rates. So the cost of money was, was very low. And then an influx of cash into the market um, and the economy with the stimulus funds and the PPO um, loans and so you had too many dollars, right? We we flooded the market with, with funds. So you have on one side, you had too many dollars. On the other side, you had cost push, which is supply chain issues caused uh, the pandemic because we went into hibernation. We kind of went into like slowed everything down. That really kind of put the supply chains into sort of this hibernation. And it takes a while for them to get back on track to what they were pre-pandemic. So that, as you as you probably felt, oh, is it taking longer to get goods, or it's taking forever, or you know these these ships are sitting out at sea and they're not being able to unload their goods from these barges. So that is all supply chain issues. Which um, the effect of that was too few goods. So on one hand we had too many dollars, on the other hand we had too few goods, and a perfect you know recipe for for high inflation. Uh, you know I think most economists agree that there's both at play post pandemic there's a, a a debate going on about how much is it that this, this quantitative ease and the stimulus cash that caused the inflation how much is it supply chain you know what kind of ratio are you looking at and the reason that there's that debate is because um 
you know, the medicine is different for how, how do you, how do you kind of combat this is different rather if it's too many dollars or, or just supply chain issues. So kind of interesting, um, definitely both uh, demand pull and cost push. So interest rates and inflation, you know, you might have heard a lot about, oh, the CPI came out and then the Federal Reserve having their, you know, how much are they going to raise interest rates, the terminal rates, all of those things that go into them trying to kind of cool inflation using interest rates. So how does this work, right? So basically to combat too many dollars chasing too few goods, they're going to make the cost of money more expensive. So they're going to raise interest rate and that should cool the economy, in theory, cool the economy and bring inflation down. This is known as having a hawkish monetary policy. So you might hear, oh, the Fed is, is how hawkish are they? Um, do we have, a, a, you know, are they, are they going to become less hawkish? And hawkish basically means the Federal Reserve is under the presumption that they need to raise interest rates to cool inflation. That's what hawkish means. The flip side is dovish, which is, hey, they, they believe that, they, that the economy is cool enough that they can actually lower interest rates to help um, to help stimulate the economy and heat up the economy, right? We've had a long run with extremely historical low interest rates, and you'll see in a minute just how how low they are historical. So as they're coming up, um, you know, here we are um, towards the end of March. Literally, the Federal Reserve just said they're going to do 25 basis points about a minute before recording this video. And there was also talk about them not doing it because of the SVB bank issue and trying to say, is that the canary sort of in the mind? We're going to use that to, to see whether we need to raise interest rates or stop raising interest rates. They went ahead and raised it 25 basis points with, with an indication that they're going to slow down on the interest rate hike. So we we hopefully are kind of at the end of, of the interest rate hikes, and that's going to have an effect on markets because you know these markets are trying to really watch closely and, and guess not just how high the interest rates are going to go up, the speed at which they're going to go up, how how long they're going to maintain that high level of interest rates before maybe they pivot to going down. And that uncertainty with interest rates causes a lot of volatility in the markets, as you've probably seen um, in 2022 going into 2023. Uh, so really interesting graph. There's a lot going on here. You can see the relationship between interest rates and inflation is sort of almost that you know they're positively correlated or almost more of like a cat and mouse game um and and you can see a couple of takeaways that it not only has inflation been you know kind of uh you know less volatile since since the 80s but interest rates have been have been low and then you're looking at around you know 2012 on super low interest rates and and so to give an example of just how low the interest rates have been compared to some historical metric of of how high they once were, in the peak of 1981, mortgage rates were a whopping 18.61%. So um, you can see that you know people kind of flex about, oh, I have a sub 3% mortgage rate when, when the interest rates are super low. Now it might be like 6.5%. And you can see the effect, or maybe we could you feel the effect on the housing market around you that everyone's kind of equity locked because if they went and sold their home and bought into another home, they'd have to pay a much higher interest rate. So, you know, for the, the the amount that they would pay per month equates to less overall home because they're paying more in interest, right? So just that little bump from, let's say, three to six and a half, look at what it's had on, on the housing market. Imagine going up to an 18.61% interest rate, almost like credit card level interest rates on a mortgage. Insane. So super high, high, high mortgage rates, um, with high interest rates in, in the early 80s. However, it's not just, you know, on one side of the coin, you have that it, it costs a lot more to borrow money. So car loans, credit cards, mortgages, HELOCs, all of that stuff, the cost of money becomes more expensive. However, the ability to kind of park your money into places that you will high, get a higher return is also positively correlated there. So at the same time, you could put your money into a six-month CD um, and get a 17.74% annual yield on that CD. Insane, right? When you look at CD rates, as you kind of walk into first mark, and you probably notice that, you know, as they have the board there at first mark, CD rates are coming up, right? Money market rates are coming up. Treasury bill rates are coming up. So it really changes the investing landscape as it does the loaning landscape where, you know, you have a greater options now to park your money in places that, that have less risk that you might be able to get more substantial yield when back in 2021 or 2020, it'd be like, 
getting very, very, very little yield on that. Um, that might be a good issue where you might want to reach out to me and we can talk about investing options and, and it really has changed the landscape. So please reach out if you have questions about that. Uh, really quick, you this term gets thrown around a lot and I think it's really important to touch on it because you might say, can they pull a soft landing? Are we headed for a soft landing, a hard landing? And basically what that means is you know, can the Fed walk this tightrope where they are going to raise interest rates to cool inflation, but not cool us enough that we're going to spiral into a recession? So as in, you know, as the economy cools down, are we going to land softly, get inflation under control, and then move forward? Or are we in for a hard landing where by the virtue of raising interest rates to cool inflation, we're going to spiral into a recession? And, and that's going to be a hard landing. So again, these terms basically mean is, is how, how narrow, how are they able to kind of walk this tightrope of, of rising, raising interest rates without causing substantial damage to our, our economic growth? And you might see another factor kind of, or uh, another index kind of that ties into this, which is the unemployment rate. And you're like, how can the unemployment rate you know, have an effect on interest rates and inflation. If the analogy I like to use, and this might be oversimplified, but I think it's I think it's it 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 helps kind of me visualize it is if if inflation was us bleeding out, okay, we kind of the Fed is kind of putting us in a self-induced coma to hope to to stop the bleeding. All right. And if the, in that analogy, the unemployment rate would sort of be like our vital signs. So as the unemployment rate comes in low, the Fed says, hey, you know, our economy is fairly strong. That's a metric of the strength of our economy. Therefore, we can continue to raise interest rates and therefore, you know, be even more hawkish, so to speak. So that that's why you might see even markets re respond negatively to a low unemployment rate because it's kind of the, how all of these pieces kind of factor in together. So I find it interesting. One other thing to kind of keep keep an eye on is unemployment rate as it pertains to interest rates and inflation. And, and that's, that's it. I, I kind of want to just kind of fly through there. I really hope you got some value out of, out of today's um, video. I hope that maybe it sheds some light. So as you're kind of following along with inflation, these things are making a little bit more sense. Uh, you know, looking towards, you know, Q2 of 2023, obviously some things to keep an eye on is, is updates with, with the, the banking sector, um, unemployment rates, CPI, that's a metric that, that we used to look at for, for inflation and how all, and then of course, interest rates. So um, I hope this helped. If you have any questions about anything specifically that I, that I talked about, please reach out to me. Or if you'd like to have a free kind uh, financial planning consultation, I, I would love to meet with you as well. The easiest way to do that would be to directly to my calendar. So please, please reach out. Um, and yeah, I, I really look forward to talking to you. I hope you got some value out of today's video. And I look forward to giving you more advice and videos um, forthcoming. Talk to you all later.